Hello, my sweet, sweet friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I wanted to do a little five month update. I want to do a five month update, five months into motherhood, as well as how baby Lace is doing. And I just want to say thank you for all of the love and support. I have never felt more connected to you guys and really feel just so seen and loved and supported in our little community so to all my fellow spiritual hot moms i love you guys so much all of my sweet sweet friends and our spiritual hot gals here who are not moms do not want to be moms or are not yet moms i am including you in that also you are amazing and i am so grateful to have you here i hope you guys are taking care of yourselves mind body soul hope you're listening to your inner goddess i hope you are filling up your own cup and i just want to again honor you in this moment so I cannot believe that it has been five months since I had baby lace. I cannot believe that it has been five months. I So much is changing and evolving and shifting, especially in the world. The world feels very heavy, even more than normal. And being a mother during this time, I try and remind myself every single day that there is a reason that Lila's soul chose to come to earth at this time. I am trying to remind myself that there is a reason that I became a mother at this time. I just realized that this is very aggressively in the way, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Can we just leave it in there for effect? I don't know. What should we do? But I, now I'm like, I don't know. Okay, we'll just Let's just skadoodle, skadaddle, skadeet, skadoot, skadat. Cool, 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 cool. We'll leave them in there. We got flowers, flowers, a rose quartz, a bunch of crystals back here. Spiritual hot mom shit. So um, I remind myself every day in the overwhelm of there is a reason. There is a reason in trusting in God, source, the universe, whatever you believe in in this lifetime, whatever your soul is feeling connected to in the now. Um, I try and remind myself that there's a reason and I try and remind myself that just as everything in my life before that didn't make sense, that felt overwhelming, that felt why, why, uh, it has worked out. It has worked out and I try and believe in the good of the world and the good of people. So really moving through that during this time has been interesting and I just during these past five months I have never felt more grateful for the work and the effort in my life that I put into healing my own shit to <laughs> to put it very frankly and i've never been more thankful to my past self for doing the things i did that got me here now and one of the most healing things that i've ever done in my life um was become a mother and the act of healing this idea of healing that we talk about all the time that we see online blah 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 um i think it becomes really overwhelming and i think it becomes daunting to people so whether you are in a season in your life where you are focused on thriving or you are just getting by know that that season is perfect for you right now and to not judge yourself or base where you should be at on other people or other parts of you know other strangers journeys um and when I say that it's been the most healing thing that I've ever done, I mean that becoming a mother, like I shared in my birth story, birth was a portal to a spiritual experience that I did not know was going to happen. I'd always heard that birth was very spiritual and it's so fucking true. It's so true. I Motherhood is a daily practice of unconditional love. Motherhood is a daily practice of being patient. Motherhood is a daily practice of honoring your own nervous system and taking care of yourself and you know knowing that at the end of the day it ultimately is our own responsibility to self-regulate, to check in with ourselves, mind, body, soul of what we're needing, of knowing that it's nobody's fault but our own if we're not putting ourselves like in this position to take care of ourselves the way that we need to be and through that has really gotten me to look at what I needed as a child that I wasn't getting and to really look at where I felt that I needed to still be remothered. I made a video while I was pregnant about becoming a mother without having a mother. 
I like these flowers in the shot, why not? Um, I did make a video like that, so I will link that down below. And I just want to say that I know that the work of remothering yourself, the work of inner child healing can feel overwhelming, but I wanna remind you that it's just simply a daily practice. It is a daily practice of showing up for your inner child the way that you needed to be shown up for. And with being a mother now, it's in these moments of feeling overwhelmed, of feeling out like overtouched, of feeling like very frustrated and agitated. And my frustration and my aggravation is never at my daughter. It's always just at like, you know, kind of myself because the only time that I'm feeling those feelings and those emotions are the days that I'm not making space for myself in my life. And when I say making space for myself in my life, I thought we had a baby wake up. Um, when I say making space for myself in my life, I mean in the sense and in the area the energy of knowing and through the past five months I've really realized that it is my job to make space for myself in my life. Yes, you know, I have my beautiful partner to help me and support me when I need it. I have my family if I need it. I can, you know, call upon people if I need it, which I understand is a gift and, you know, something that not everyone has. So I do say that and honor that also. Um, and I've realized that ultimately the days that I don't get up and I don't make space for myself in my life, um, and that's where I've done it. That's how I've done it. I have gotten up early most days and that's the time that I do my little, you know, morning meditation. I do my quickie journaling and I just take time to really breathe into the day before uh someone else is the focus of my day and you know that's really for me what motherhood has become it is the times that my baby is awake she comes first and knowing that that is okay knowing that you know that doesn't make me lazy or sloppy when you know she's coming before myself and if I want to get ready for the day if I want to make sure that I have food ready for myself during the day then I get up early and I do that or I try and balance it and when I say balance it I mean incorporating her into what I'm doing so that brings me to my next point of the biggest lesson and I think the biggest aha moment that I've had in motherhood thus far is really to just include her in what I'm doing, to include her in what I'm doing. I understand that I'm a work from home mom, so I know it's a little bit different if your baby goes to daycare or, you know, if you're also a work from home mom and, you know, it just is not in your rhythm and routine yet, or, you know, if you're fully a stay at home mom, girl, this is for you too, because it's really fun. I don't know why I cock back like I'm gonna throw a punch, I'm not, but, um, really working on instead of like entertaining Lila, right? I get a lot of questions about like, what about during her wake windows? Like, how do you entertain her? What do you guys do? My biggest focus is just including Lila in my life, including Lila in this life. So if I'm cooking, I am pretending that I am on Food Network and I'm telling her everything we're doing and we're talking and making sure that I, you know, if I, if I have a book that I'm reading, if I have a book that I want to read, I read the book to Lila also. And you know, there's movement, your girl's working on her postpartum body, um, getting some of that strength back. Let me tell you something. Running up the stairs with the baby has shown me if there was an emergency, if there was a crisis, your girl would not be thriving. So um, when I work out now, I include her. I like wearing her and taking her on walks. We have a treadmill downstairs. I like wearing her on the treadmill. It's like a little bit of an extra workout. And, you know, she's now starting to like really come into her own more than ever. I think I've always felt very connected with Lila's energy, with Lila's soul. And now to see her expressing herself so beautifully. And that's my biggest goal in this life to just make Lila energetically in her emotions, in her energy field, feel supported that whoever she wants to be in this life, that whatever she's doing in this life, that she feels safe to do that, that feels she feels safe safe to express herself and it's in those moments of feeling overwhelmed or kind of frustrated in the harder moments of like when she's crying or you know she's very upset and needing to remain calm to be the grounded energy for her um I mean that's hard that's hard our generation I think um being a millennial mother I think is a very different experience and it's 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 super interesting to witness and just live in and be in um it's something that my grandma and I talk about a lot um 
just kind of the expectations that were on her as a mother, um, that were on my mom as a mother, and that were on, you know, my great grandma. Would that be my great grandma? Yes, my great grandma. So, you know, really just thinking about how different everything is and also picking and choosing what feels good and valid for me of what type of mother do I want to be? Not what type of mother do I see online and I think is the perfect mother or what do I think society like thinks I should do or oh, I have to do this or I should do this. It's really asking myself every day, like what mother does Lila need? And knowing that our children chose us for a reason so to stay the truest version of you is the greatest gift that we can give to our children and to make sure that we are staying true to ourselves and our best version our highest version of self in the tough moments also I think is super valid and I think just owning and honoring that like there are super hard moments and there those are the challenging moments that is where the spiritual hot mom shit comes in of like needing to take a deep breath and just kind of know that it's just a moment it is just a moment and there's there's going to be moments continuously and even before motherhood there were moments where I need to take a deep breath where my feelings could not come first where I was putting someone else above me and that's okay there are going to be seasons in life where you know your moments of self are carved out and created by you if that makes sense so really looking at what's working, what feels good. Miss Lila has, um, I shared this in one of the last vlogs that she's been waking up again in the middle of the night. She was sleeping through the night um, and now she started waking up again. Totally fine by me. Um, I personally am not gonna do the sleep training thing. I think that I, it is better for our family, for me just to trust her, to trust her and know that if she is waking up, it's for a reason, whether it be she's hungry, she needs a change, she, need some love, needs a hug. Um, I think and feel and know that simply just showing up every single day has taken a lot of the anxiety and stress off my plate. And when I say showing up every single day, I mean, instead of being so rigid and focused on trying to micromanage this chapter of life, just being open to whatever is going to be, to being open to this beautiful new person in my life who just feels like my heart outside my body and trusting that this beautiful body Lila that I created has her own soul her own heart her own desires her own dreams and what if I was just open to supporting that and knowing that the nights that I'm tired the days that I'm feeling you know a little burnt out the days that I'm feeling overwhelmed or out touched that they're not going to last forever they're not going to last forever and you know, on, you know, Lila's going through a phase right now where she prefers to contact nap. And in the very beginning of the newborn days, we didn't do a lot of contact napping. So honestly, I'm soaking them up right now. I am soaking them up every ounce that I can. And I talked about this on the Spiritual Hot Mom Shit podcast. If you guys have not subscribed to the podcast, make sure to go check that out. But um, I would rather make less money right now and be quote unquote less successful or go less far in my career um, to put Lila first for a little bit. And of course I am a working mom, so there is work that has to get done. And you know, two or three days a week, I do uh, have like three hour chunks of the, that day where I get help and um, those chunks are hard. Like my biggest struggle in motherhood right now is feeling as if I'm never doing enough, as if I'm never doing enough and to feel that whether I had her in daycare, whether I had James at home and quitting his job so I could work full time, whether, you know, I hired a nanny, whether it was my family helping me, um, to know that there's there's always going to be someone saying something about it. And honestly, like I'm a real person. And when people make digs about, you know, my family helping me or when people make digs about like what I'm deciding to do with my child, it's like, it does hurt. It hurts in a very different way and different level of to know that like, it's already something that I struggle with, right? Like, I don't know a single mom who doesn't kind of deal with that of always feeling as if 
there's one area that you're just not juggling correctly. And that's what it feels like most days. It feels like a juggle, but honestly, it feels good also. And I think that's what my biggest thing is of, you know, going back to what I was saying, I didn't finish my thought, that that is my biggest struggle as a mother right now of always feeling like I either should be working more, I didn't get enough during the day, get enough done during the day, or feeling as if I didn't spend enough time with Lila during the day. Um, and I share this with my other mom friends and to know that just kind of everyone feels this way. And I do wonder like what needs to change or shift in order for that to like not be the case you know um but I'm kind of just rolling with it day after day and I shared this bef like while I was still pregnant I shared it you know when Lila was a newborn newborn of I'm figuring it out every single day I'm figuring it out every single day and I'm trusting the process of figuring it out of knowing that it is working out of knowing that like there there's not a doubt in my mind that Lila knows that she is loved. There's not a doubt in my mind that I'm a good mother. There's not a doubt in my mind that, you know, things are working out and feeling good, but, and not, but, and I still have moments where like my ego and fear creeps in of like, I could always be doing more. And, um, it feels tricky. It feels tricky. And I wonder if this is how people feel about like baby number two or having multiple children. Like you're kind of never giving one enough attention. Um, because it's so interesting that I don't know if we will be a one and done household. I think ideally I do want to have a second baby. I, want Lila to have a sibling and have that connection with someone but to already feel a pull of my energy of like my job had always been my baby and something I really loved and loved focusing on and growing and evolving in different ways and trying new things and Lila is my focus now and so to think about adding another thing person beautiful energy <laughs> into my life it it honestly is overwhelming so being open to that being open to that answer coming to me um and just focusing every day on loving her the best way that I can and being patient for her and that has been the most healing thing for me of being the patient parent that I needed being the loving parent that I needed being the hands-on focused person and parent that I needed um and I think that's different for everyone everyone has different types of parenting that they engage in and whatever is right for your family is right for your family just because I do something or don't do something does not mean it's right or wrong I think that you know even when I share like favorites videos if I love a product and you hated it neither of us are wrong if you if I share something that I absolutely hate and you love it, it doesn't mean you're wrong. We are literally able to have such different experiences and experience the same amount of love. We can have different birth experiences and still have a child we love. So um, that's kind of my update. Baby Lace is almost crawling. She's trying so hard. Um, she is standing up, she's sitting up. So she loves to stand, she loves to, you know, be on the couch holding the couch and standing up we got her her first walker that she's loving she loves tearing it up she is just like she's such an aries moon it is so beautiful to see um and seeing she is an air sign and so just seeing how vocal she is and how much she loves to communicate and that's very true for her sign so it's very beautiful to witness um and support of course uh her wake windows are still only about two hours two to three hours um she's still only drinking four or five ounces at a time and just trusting her in that. Uh, she is trying food. She has been trying food. Uh, she loves right now her little mesh teether. I will link down below some of our absolute current favorites. If you guys want to see like my current favorites video with Lila, let me know, but I'll link just a few that we are really loving. So like her mesh 
teether for frozen fruit, loves it. These happy baby teething crackers, loves them. And of course her walker, I will link down below. Um, and she's just the sweetest baby. If you guys don't follow our spiritual hot mom shit Instagram, that's where I share a lot of mom things as well as the podcast. So oh, that's our little baby update. She um, actually slept through the night last night. So maybe we're getting back into that. I don't even know. I think that, you know, I know that around five months is when they really do start to understand patterns and routines. So we definitely have her on a night routine. We definitely have her on a bit of a routine over a schedule. She does not have a schedule. Um, I do not, you know, cut her bottle off at a certain time. So then she's hungry at X, Y, and Z time. Um, there's no sleep schedule. It really is just, she's just a baby. She's not even been on this earth for six months. All she needs is love and support and to feel safe in being herself and growing and expanding and expressing her little needs. So that is my focus. Um, that little girl is going to be crawling and walking very, very soon. I just know it. I was an early walker, so we'll see what she does. Um, and yeah, her connection with her dad is so sweet and beautiful and it's just so ugh, I love it I love it so much I love when James comes home at the end of the day and I'm holding Lila and he'll come up the stairs and it's always exciting she gets so excited she giggles and she'll like shake her little body and then hide her head in my like neck um we you know go see grandma and grandpa we go on little drives we have movie night and dinner with grandma and grandpa a lot um so that's very fun and yeah, just really soaking up all these like baby days with Lila and the newborn days and, you know, soaking up as much time as I can with my grandparents while they're still here. It's so funny. I see like a lot of, or I don't see a lot of negative comments, but like I see the dig that people try and make about my grandparents and it's just so funny because like I've always spent a lot of time with them I've always like spent a lot of time with them been at their house like my grandma really is like my best friend and one of my best friends and my grandpa is you know my dad figure in my life and I've been close to them my whole life so it's very interesting to see now that people have a problem with it um very surprising but yeah I've always seen them I've always been very glued to their hip and I love it. I love our connection and as I've gotten older, it just is so fun. And you know, now that I am older, it's the, as I'm getting older and they're getting older, the roles have changed a bit and I'm okay with that. I love taking care of my family. I love supporting my family where I can and I love showing up for them and I love having these memories together and it is just so beautiful. So I'm so grateful for these past five months. I cannot wait for the next five months. And she is just, she's doing so good. I'm so proud of her. And I wanna remind you that, you know, if your baby's not rolling over yet, or they're only drinking two ounces, or oh, they're still waking up like four times a night, your baby is doing perfect. Your baby is doing perfect. Um, literally talk to your doctor make sure you feel supported ask for help if you need it ask for you know emotional help if you need it and being a mom is hard motherhood is hard and it is the right type of hard it is the most eye-opening soul opening heart opening thing you will ever do and it's also can be the most healing and loving and expansive thing you ever do and i wouldn't change a single thing even the hard days. The hard days, I know one day I will look back and miss them. I will miss Lila wanting me all the time. I'll miss her wanting mommy to nap. And you know, she's doing it now where she's like reaching out for me and she does like, I'm gonna cry. She's doing like the little shrimp call if someone else is holding her and she wants mommy. Um, and it just, it makes me so happy. I, I'm so grateful to be her mother. So I'm gonna wrap it up, pull it together. But I love you guys so much. I hope you're having a beautiful day and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you guys. I know there's a lot of silent viewers who just sit back and watch, but know that I see you and I am so grateful for you and I love you. So leave a comment down below telling me about yourself. If you're a mom, if you're not a mom, 
how long you've been part of the Lace family. And I will talk to you guys so soon.